here to talk about Cauldron today. Cauldron has been around a while. Uh, if any of the older investors are, are, are around, they'll know that. Um, but there has been a bit of a rebirth. And what I'm here to do today is explain that rebirth, the new strategy, um, and, and our story and how we're going to create value. Um, and it's not, as I, I do obviously look at things like hot copper, uh, it's not because we're about to do a cap rise, guys. Um, don't worry about that. It is It is just simply to tell, tell the new story. Um, you can turn the next slide, thanks. Um, so it's great to have Greg talk um, previously because a lot of what I say will actually reinforce um, what he has said and vice versa. Um, uranium is a core part of our strategy. We do have a foundational asset, um, which is Yanry, and similar um, to the alligator asset there, it's an ISR asset, which is really crucial. Um, more broadly, we will also be looking at, uh, you know, the energy transition, and there are a few little commodities there that we like the look of um, at the moment. And the ability to deliver on those uh, is driven by our new team, which I'll get into on the new slide. Uh, new chairman, me, new exploration manager, uh, all focused on um, building a revised um, asset portfolio. Um, we only recently did a capital raise, uh, well supported through Canaccord, great set of shareholders. Um, and, you know, we've got the confidence now to move forward and um, execute our strategy. We do have an existing asset portfolio. And what that means is we can probably uh, sell, sell some existing assets, generate value from those, and then we can use those, uh, that, those funds to further the new strategy. Uh, on to the next slide. Um, now, we, we actually put a more fulsome investor presentation out only last week. This slide is slightly different to the other one because what I've done here is run through the team as opposed to the board of directors. If you're not about the directors, you can uh, you can look on the website. Um, so last year, we've had Ian, Ian Mulholland join. Ian, as chairman, is a geo, extremely well-respected in the exploration uh, world, um, strong track record of hardcore exploration and, and discovery. Um, myself, um, I joined uh, very late last year, um, and I do have a bit of a background in RAD and in nuclear stuff, uh, both through Rothschild in London, um, where I was involved in M&A and corporate matters with respect to nuclear industry. Um, and also, I was involved in uh, getting uh, approved and financed uh, Australia's only commercially operating radioactive waste repository, as well as a chemical hazardous waste facility. Um, Michael Fry is also with us. Uh, Michael provides COSEC and CFO services. Um, and again, long track record in, in the sort of the small end of the ASX and exploration act activity. Uh, and finally, I'm really pleased to say Angelo has joined us. Now, Angelo joined us only a few weeks ago. Um, and, you know, getting a decent geologist and, and exploration manager at the moment is really tough. Uh, Angelo is fantastic. His passion for rocks and geology and, you know, and, and, the, and the geological process that had happened millions of years ago, he can talk for, for hours. Um, we've been, Angela and I, up on site visits recently because we're looking at buying some assets. Um, and it's just, it's, it's fantastic to have someone who's so passionate on board. And it really, between Ian and himself, you can see that we've got the technical expertise to assess, uh, you know, new asset opportunities. And then through Michael and myself, We've got the commercial uh, capacity to do that too. So I think we're really well positioned. Uh, next slide, please. So the current portfolio, we have uh, Yanri, it's uranium, it's ISR, and just in comparison, it's about twice as big as the asset that Greg was mentioning, um, although it is in WA, which provides some near-term development challenges. We've got some sand assets in WA. We like the silica market. Uh, there's some really good sustainability aspects around that. Um, and, you know, silica can be used in a whole range of things uh, for the energy transition and other things, including, you know, glass for solar panels and microprocessors and stuff. Um, and we've got the Blackwood Gold asset, and that is the asset that we're probably looking at, 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 at um, selling. Um, good asset, tier, you know, 200,000 tonnes, uh, 200,000 ounces, sorry, of historical uh, production out of there. But it's probably better to someone who's an expert in sort of, you know, Victorian underground gold. Um, so we think there's better value there for someone else to take that asset on. Uh, next page. Uh, so what you see us doing, we, we've already announced that we are um, looking to, to create value out of at Blackwood. Um, PAC Partners out of Melbourne are helping us with that process. Um, we've then got Yanry. I'll get on to in a second. Um, and Yanry has, you know, one of the largest resources 
of uranium in WA. And it is, as opposed to some of the other ones in WA, it is amenable to ISR leaching, kind of like the, uh, the South Australian alligator asset that we talked about earlier. Um, so there is, sorry, uh, there is an opportunity to, oh, I've just got a low battery warning. Uh, there is an opportunity uh, to um, put some more holes into Yanri. We know, we know where, the, where that um, mineralization continues and we can expand that asset base. But similarly, um, we can look to purchase land uh, outside of WA um, that has um, uh, more opportunity for near-term development, given obviously there are a few issues um, with the WA policy at the moment. And then finally, we're looking at other assets within um, the, uh, the general um, energy transition thematic. Next slide. I'm just going to quickly run through a couple of things on the uranium. One other. Um, look, the uranium, there's a perfect... One more slide, thanks. There's a perfect storm um, at the moment with uranium. Um, for years, people did not understand that, you know, uranium and the nuclear generation can be seen as green. There was a balance between what do you do at end of life with um, nuclear waste versus the benefits of, of low carbon baseload power. Um, internationally, that balance is now very heavily on the side of decarbonisation and baseload um, carbon free power. In Australia, we may be a little bit behind that, but certainly um, with AUKUS, um, you know, that, that mood is starting to change in Australia. And I think that's a positive outlook uh, for uranium here. Next slide. Um, Greg mentioned this, ISR leaching. 20 years ago, it was about 15% of the market. Now it's 60% of the market. Why is that? Because it's cheaper. Um, and it means that any assets that are amenable to ISR leaching, uh, such as the, the alligator one and such as Yanri, uh, will be the first ones that get developed. Uh, next slide. Huge nuclear renaissance going on around the world. Uh, many, many, many countries looking to take advantage not only uh, of low carbon, but also diversification away from um, oil and gas and, and reliance on, on Russia. Uh, next slide. Um, what's interesting is, is Russia and, and Eastern aligned countries do account for a significant proportion of global U production and conversion. Um, what you're finding now, therefore, is that the US doesn't want to buy Russian uranium. Hey, who would have thought? Um, and so there's a lot of focus on finding new sources of U in geographically friendly um, and ge ge geopolitically friendly uh, environments. Next slide. Uh, on to Yanri, we're, we're located here in WA. It's a big asset in a region with some other good deposits. Um, it is amenable to ISR leaching. Um, and therefore, that means it's amenable to low cost, low, low cost opex, low cost capex. Um, next slide. The deposit is open. We do know we know where to look for some additional tons uh, of you, um, and that's one thing that we're looking to do with some of the money that we raised um, late last year. Um, because next slide, because Greg's already gone over ISR, I won't talk about it. Except it is crucial to having the lowest cost. Mines, I'm very pleased to say that Yanri is, is ISO eligible. Uh, next slide. One more. Thank you. ESG, um, we are all focused on, on decarbonisation um, and energy transition. That's our thematic. What you'll see with uranium companies in, in, from a social licence perspective is you have to be transparent. And one of the benefits of the uranium industry is there are some fantastic global resources like World Nuclear Database uh, on IAEA and IEA. The data there is absolutely transparent and it needs to be to give people confidence in the industry. So um, I think that's a, bit, a big positive uh, of uranium. Next slide. Um, you can see here, and, and, and Tim mentioned at the start, our, our market cap's quite small at, at, at 5 million bucks. And just to give, to give a bit of a comparison, um, you know, our Yanri deposit is about twice the size of the uh, alligator deposit that was talked about earlier, yet we're about 1 20th um, of their market cap. Now, that's a bit of a, a, a generous uh, comparison. But what it shows you, though, is that there's a lot of room for upside in Cauldron, not only through Yanri, but through a new team that's dedicated to building an asset portfolio in the energy transition space. Uh, that's about it for now. Thanks, Jono. Bang on time. 
Um, you, you kind of touched on a, a tone with the WA government in regards to policy. D- does that uh, impact Yenro? Yeah, look, uh, WA policy is is uh, a little problematic, but it's that's a WA policy currently. Uh, it was only brought in in 2017. And what you've seen with, you know, things moving in federal land with AUKUS, uh, you, you, there's, 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 the, there's a groundswell of support coming through in Australia for nuclear. Um, you know, we're going to have nuclear subs in Australia very soon. Those nuclear subs have 200 megawatt nuclear reactors in them. Uh, essentially, essentially SMRs, small, small modular reactors. Um, you know what, if they're good enough to be sitting off the coasts of our country and, and you know, sitting a couple of metres away from our sailors, then, I, you know, I think the, co- the country realises they're good enough to be placed, you know, on the ground and generating low carbon power for us. And, and can you explain um, why, how you kind of, the Yanray project has the kind of potential to have low risk exploration opportunities? Uh, yeah, so it, there's been a lot of historic drilling on the Anna. We've got a really good understanding of the Paleo Channel there and where it extends and how we can infill drill and things like that. So, um, you know, that, that is one thing that we will look to do. We'll balance that, though, against spending money in jurisdictions outside of WA that, that don't have that current policy issue. And when you, when you spoke about the kind of the, the portfolio approach, what sort of commodity-based assets would, would you look at in regards to where you're positioning yourselves? Yeah, so um, you know the 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 our mantra of exploring the energy transition provides a, a fair bit of breadth. Mm. Um, you know, but you know, probably means we won't be looking at, at the sort of ferro alloys and, and that kind of thing. Um, you know, and it'll build upon the existing asset base, which is obviously uranium. We've got some silica um, and other things that are essential to decarbonising the economy. And and had. Have you had any early interest in kind of securing offtakes, or are you having some discussions with kind of global partners that are interested in the project? Uh, n- n- not as yet. Um, that said, uh, as a as a future supply of uranium in Australia, which is geopolitically like the most friendly to the US there is, and the US still remains the largest user of uranium and the largest operator of nuclear plants. I don't think you'll ever have a problem selling uranium out of Australia. And, and so what, what are the next sort of milestones over the next six months in terms of, say, uh, drilling on Yanray? Yeah, so look, I, I mentioned that we've been out on some site visits recently. So, um, you know, we are progressing um, with that strategy of looking at new projects and, and new land. Um, I won't go into too much detail about exactly what they are, but they're consistent with the strategy. Um, so you look at you look at us to do that. You look at us to deliver value out of things like Blackwood and, and, the, and the sand assets. Um, and then we'll be looking at Yanri as well. I was going to ask you about the sand assets and probably just finish on that. So in your recent quarterly report, you kind of mentioned the opportunity for sale of bulk sand into kind of overseas markets. Uh, can you further give us some further details of that? Yeah, so we've got a, a there is a, a stockpile of existingly mined and, and screened product that sits on, on our mining lease. Um, additionally, then you can you can sell uh, sand for sort of construction sand, so using concrete, um, or uh, land uh, sand to, to for filling uh, land reclamation. Um, the biggest market for that is Singapore, uh, although Hong Kong is also a market, and that's a market which you know is not necessarily that high margin, but it's extremely high volume. Um, you know, it's millions of tons a year that go into that market. Um, so that is an interesting opportunity. And I think we'll just finish. I think you touched on selling a, a gold asset potentially. Do, do you know what that's worth? Uh, I won't get drawn into how much of that's worth, but I would say that, look, if we do deliver some value out of that, that will be very helpful and how allow us to, you know, go and put that into the ground in uranium in some way, shape or form or, or buy some more energy transition assets. John, thanks for your time. That's all we have time for. Uh, nice to see you again. Enjoy your weekend. Thanks, Tim.